Maybe. And I stress that maybe. One day the black man will stop blaming the white man for the tax and get up and fix the four flats on the car called freedom that the ancestors bought us. God, let our forefathers out of the American Egypt and the roads that Canaan has taken us through. The valley of the shadow of death called the ghetto. And yes, I know. By way of COINTELPRO, they have killed many of those that we would dare call Moses. But why do you refuse to move your toes? We have become too damn complacent. The promised land is adjacent. We are well able to take it after we stop the excuses, after we stop the black on black abuses, after we pray and weep that Christ can give us a newness of heart so that we can be of one mind. Brother from another mother, we are running out of TikTok time and you can argue over the car and why it's missing parts, but that won't make it start. We gotta march. But whether you choose to hold my hand or Die where you stand, I will walk alone, crawl, skip, sprint, brave sharp glass flip, but I will make it, yes brother, I will make it to the finish line, to the finish line, but not by sight. Remember this prophecy because I am, and this is, true life. Thank you. Alright, um, one of the last, like, slam poems I wrote, my, my pieces that I, like, I never really used. Um, I wrote it, I never really did, so I'm gonna do it for you guys. Yeah. All right, so I mean, if you like it, you like it, yeah. All right, uh, it's kind of hard to see you guys, so, all right. But, uh, it goes like this, it goes. Hoping not to lose you from the mad dash, hope, hope whew. Hoping not to lose you in the mad dash from the NJ path, I approached you to let you know that you smile as if the corners of your lips were paperclip to God's fingertips. Since then, I've been trying to figure out how many innocent women will it take to peel you away from my memory. No need to dream. I see you in every blink like your face is etched into the black of my lids. 36 showers have yet to scrub your caress from your shoulders. How many zaps from men in black will it take for me not to remember? Because I remember how easy. Tony, Tony, and Tony made it for you to lay your head on my pillow and relax and relax we did baby vodka and pineapple juice aren't to blame for what we did i relive that night we were just strangers in the rented room sharing the bed like spaces between our fingers interlocked till the morning lifted her skirt and showed the sun my arms held you careful as we lip bit till teeth prints left and dents like braille for tongue we discovered new language as our words were catapulted into mispronunciation i remember your breasts beautiful in concavity suckled sensitive to pleasure between Right, left, thumb press, and light tugs, fingernails plunge deep into sweaty skin as you stomach my extension, stroke long, deep, rapid, headboard tap, constant, more is cold for don't disturb. Women, wish they could click their heels three times to be here, the ghost of your kiss still lingers here, ear, and neck, lingers like strands of hair for we, we forgot to collect, making you a possible suspect in this fall war wreck, and I still remember that beautiful sundress, I would felt so lifeless over your tattoo torso, still high off the dopamine, this was love, or was it lust? It won't matter, because when the news of this escapade solidifies your boyfriend's suspicions, how quickly you would tell him that night was some huge mistake, like you ain't enjoy that shit, and things will get abusive. He will verbally choke you against the wall, smack you with arguments you can't deflect, black and blue your feelings, long sleeves won't hide the scars, he will spit upon your heart in the midst of his rage, but by then, he will have already forgotten, he will have already forgotten every compliment misplaced, every call he didn't care to make, every text not sent, but you won't. All those things will only bring to your remembrance that night and forbidden fruit and how it was worth every regret. And when I approached you to let you know that you smile as if the corners of your lips paper clips to God's fingertips. Wow. Some of you guys might not have had or heard. It's uh, a little bit more of the sensitive side. Uh, one of my favorites. Um, it's called uh, it's called Poem Babies, and um, yeah, Poem Babies, and uh, it goes like this. I may never know what it'll feel like to have a daughter, but nevertheless. 
God and his magnanimity has provided me a pen, blown life into a body of words and blessed me with a precious poem, baby girl, and I love her. She is minuscule pixels of me thoughtfully reflected, the embodiment of self-expression, therefore I call her poetry. For she was made in my image, Afrocentric in her penmanship, baby. The ink that flows through you is only blue because it's my eye tear drips. That's why you're so fool. How dare I abandon her? Like my poet abandoned me. Left. Untitled and half written. I am my mother's side of the story. Spoken from the pinnacle of her heart because the bottom is a graveyard of decomposing emotions. I am purposely written down in hopes that someone will look up. Understanding that life is not about how many points people give you, but how many people lives you can give points to. Untied a noose. Understanding that the journey from brain cell to pen gel is one that many poem babies unfortunately fail. Understanding that I am one of the fortunate few because too many of these poem babies are aborted in the clinic of our minds or forced to go coalesce and none of them should go loosely but as for my seed often will I remind her she is beautiful in every sense of the word teach her she is pro verbs 31 beginning with verse 10 in the flesh less she goes to poetry slams and the judges don't score her a 10 she may cry for not being picked to win but she would never call herself worthless formulated with purpose because daddy thinks she's perfect and she is. Every night, I would remind her that she is special. So what if the poem babies at her workshop have on the most expensive metaphors or their similes are well liked? You are unique, full with substance. Speak with conviction. Love yourself and those that matter will love you back, said the best dad ever. Cement stars and plastic moons, but you are very much human. The sensitive side of me helping me to realize that poems are just people. And life is a notebook. Yeah, a tatted notebook. But no matter how wrinkled the pages, we are all worth reading. Even if no one wants to recite you, love you. Because life is very much a tatted notebook, so don't tear yourself out of it. Don't tear yourself out of it. And we all may not be poetry written in beautiful cursive, but don't ever cover to change your font. Because even in your Times New Romans, there's meaning. Because God doesn't scribble scrabble. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! You know, um, I've been doing uh, the poetry gig for like a year now, um, and I remember the, some of the first poems I ever wrote. Um, I remember I went out with these poems. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't have no poetry friends. All I did was stay home and watch like Def Jam poetry on YouTube. And uh, some guy told me about the New Yorker, and I happened to go there, and I met a friend, and I met another friend, and they told me about this, and I met more friends, and I was like, yo, this shit is cool, and I just kept doing it, and that's, you know, that's why I'm right here where I'm at now. But uh, the first poem I went out with, uh, I remember how I wrote it. I was, sitting in, I was sitting in my mom's room, I was trying to write a poem, and I just couldn't think of nothing, you know what I mean? I was like, man, there was nothing that was coming to me. And I used to like, just get up and go to the bathroom, and I used to come back, and I lose my pen. And I'd be writing, and I'd be like, no, nah, that's not good. And I throw away the paper. And I was like, all right, you know, I'll leave. And I'd come back, I'm like, damn, where's my pen? You know what I mean? So I was like, you know, I was sitting, I was like, yo, I'm wasting a lot of paper and pens writing this poem. And I was like, oh, shit, that's the poem. <laughs> Papers and pens. There you go. Right? So this poem is called Papers and Pens, right? And it goes like this, if I remember. All right? This first one I ever did. All right? So it goes like this. It goes. Uh, this. It's for every paper and pen that was lost in the making of this poem. <laughs> this is for every paper and pen that died in the name of poetry. To every paper and pen in a time so convenient, what's more faithful then? You were an example of one with pride and loyalty to your duty. For every paper and pen who gave themselves for our creative freedom so that we can share knowledge, expand minds, and redeem the times. This is for every paper, no matter white or yellow, pen, red, black, or green. You provoke those to think who otherwise wouldn't and gave meaning to things seen still misunderstood. See, every paper and pen, I want you to know that you didn't go in vain. Because with every poem told, that's at least one soul change. And that may not be a lot, but that's one more gain. One more save on this war on error. You may be gone, but not forgotten. And our hearts and in our books, your work lives on forever. So every paper and pen, I can't thank you enough. So tonight, we pay homage to every paper and pen who gave promise. For every paper and pen, can we have a moment of silence? <laughs> Oh.
On behalf of those that speak and those who heard every paper and every pen, we thank you for every word. Thank you. So that was a paper and pen. You said I got two more minutes. Four more minutes. Four more minutes. Five more minutes. Four more minutes. Talk. Two talk. What else I got out there? <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So I hope I remember this one. Uh, so the next poem I wrote after that was uh, I remember I was talking to my friend, and he was telling me that like playing games were like bad. You know what I mean? And I was like, Yeah, like playing games is bad. Like I, I can see why you say that. But I was like, a, a part of me like knows why I play games, you know what I mean? So I was like, I'm gonna write a poem called, I'll play games, and I happen to do it. I don't know what happened to me afterwards. I say I'm gonna write this poem, and I never do it now, but uh, this is one of the ones I happen to do. Uh, and it was after the, I, uh, the paper and pens, and it goes like this. It goes, I play games because they're fun, and I play games because they're cool, and they were always a nice substitute for things to do like homework after school. I play games when I'm bored, I play games when I'm alone. The worst thing to do when I'm playing games is call me on the phone. I play games of all kinds, no need for a rhythm or a rhyme, and if it's money on the line, then I'm winning every time. But the truth is, I play games because it's an escape from this fiction, from this fucked up way of living, when I need a distraction from the important things in my life that to bear my full attention. When I want to escape the convictions of a piss poor decision, the game becomes my addiction with a bittersweet addiction. I play games because I mind travel with no ignition to a distance jurisdiction where I fully understand the exposition of my mission will lose it is my only restriction where there's no tuition for my frequent indecision I'll play games because there's so much in life that I regret and when I'm upset in a set I can easily press reset but I haven't found one for a game called life yet so when I do don't so until I do don't blockade this arcade or you may find your name in the parade of games that I don't play <laughs> Two minutes, two minutes, two Take minutes, it. two minutes, 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 so if the sun forgets to set her alarm clock and doesn't wake up on time tomorrow, leaving me in the dark so thick I can clinch with the fist, I will not fear. For I know that your word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Never will I complain over my problems knowing that you have already done the math and you make up the sum. I have divided myself into the divine and the remainder of I is none. Who can subtract from that? Who else will I go to for that which I like for he who has the power to give me breath four days beyond the strength of the grave? Life can feel like one big hockey puck, but thou has never failed to save to the uttermost. This is more than a Facebook post. It's the sounds of words praised that's in the back of throats, Apicinia style to conjure up, hoping to try in on that slow boat to heaven. These are for those who count and only know September 11th, and those who only know the fear of a master's whip. How many ever there be who have ears to hear, let them hear, he sees you there. Go ahead and cry. Build a rain man, if you will. But keep your head to the sky for the Savior draw up now. When this gospel is told, the crows won't have any more hearts to take from the warm to the cold. There'll be no fear of Boston bombs that bet to explode on this path unwinding. Love will come out of hiding, and we won't have to go seek it. Love will come knocking, and we won't be there, and we will be there to retrieve it. And peace won't have the vacation, but actually own the home and the ghettos of the mind. Thank you, bro.